this is Dr. E from Dr. E Skateboard. Uh, today I'm going to walk you through um, Prusa Slicer settings, uh, all the minute details you'll need to do. Um, so once you buy uh, the print kit, it will come with a zip file. Uh, for this example, it's going to be Dr. E 127mm TPU wheels. Inside the file, if you unzip it, uh, there is two G-code left and right tire. Um, you can pretty much straight put it into any pr stock Prusa printer and um, you don't have to mess with it. But uh, if you have a different printer or if you want to, you know, really learn about how this wheel works, um, I suggest slicing your own. I've also included a uh, 127v1 Prusa Slicer 3MF file that you can open up, which already has the left and right TPU wheel. Um, so let's actually go ahead and take a look at that. Um, so once you open it up, you're going to get this uh, left and right. You can just leave these out. This is the left tire, the arrow direction going to the right. So you can slice this and print it out. And as long as it's outside the plate, um, when you print the right side, you're going to simply move this to the, to the left. Just make sure you click in the center and everything uh, shows green or you could select uh, over here select everything every, yeah select the whole thing and then move it like that move it away and then just grab this guy and put it back in all right now the way this wheel is printed it uses different levels of uh, densities of uh, infill and the way I was able to do it uh, was by using modifiers so if you do um if you if you right if you do a right click on here and you can add a, a modifier and do a cylinder and you can resize this to something like I don't know 600 500 maybe 500 and then I would place this uh, here and I, I would uh, change it into different sizes so I have different levels so I've already done that work for you so you don't have to mess with that um, you just have to open up the 3MF file uh, and then um, the only thing you really got to play with is the infill values. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you. Yeah, let me get rid of this. We don't do that. Um, here you'll see uh, one through four, right? So one is going to be the top layer, the top tread, right? This helper layer is there to help you print um, on top of because uh, some of these infills are... Uh, not very dense so you need to uh, basically print over air and these helper infills will help you do that I'll explain a bit a second number two is gonna be the second tread from the top then you got helper two and then you got the middle tread that's gonna follow the global infill setting so the global infill setting is only gonna be in the middle uh, and I have it set at 5% um, infill at, with gyrate and also, I've got the infill anchors at 20 millimeters and 20 millimeters. And what that does is allows the infill to be really connected uh, to the perimeters to make your wheel stronger. And then you got the helper three, uh, and then you got the th uh, three. This is going to be the th I'm just I'm just going to call it the number three tread. All right. So this this is going to be number two. This is going to number number three, and then last one is going to be number four tread. The one in the uh, middle, we'll just call it the middle tread. So two and three tread all right in between treads so the most important values um you will want to do well let me slice it first here uh it, let, let's just look at it first so how is this wheel uh made so you got the first layer here um the four, 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 fourth layer it's gonna be honeycomb at 42 percent i found that um you don't really get, gain much strength going any higher than 42 and also you can go lower in certain situations let's say you live in like freezing temperatures then you can make the outs outer tread a little bit less dense to make your wheels a little softer and grip better so this fourth tread is going to be 42 percent honeycomb and then the first level is going to be very important because this is where it holds uh, your wheel there's a slight indentation where the hubs go and that's where it's going to hold it so that's why we print this uh, outer end very hard and also as the wheel squeezes in um, this must stay strong to give you very good rolling resistance all right so that's why it's really hard and the second layer is going to be a layer of um, if you go number three here seven percent gyroid all right 
that's gonna be your um, number three tread here, All right? Uh, after that, we need the helper. You see it right there? You see how there's a lot of um, open spots? So if you try to print any kind of pattern that's not straight, uh, it might fall in, inside and you won't get a very strong um, infill. So to, it all depends on different printers. Some printer can print on air really good. Um, but um, just to make it consistent, I have about four, four or five layers of uh, rectilinear because this is really easy to print over air. Let me actually show you real quick. So you can see right here, it's printing over air by using rect rectilinear, uh, you're able to create this nice surface to put another layer of a uh, thin layer of whatever you want to put. And here's a little bit more developed one. You can see um, if I do this, I make sure this layer is going to get started right. If you don't have this uh, help helper layer, um, it may f your infill may fall underneath it and that's just not good. All right. So I call it helper and by using rectilinear, rectilinear itself is just very flexible. Even at four or five layers, it's just not going to affect the wheel. Um, now that's the helper three and we use infill of 20% rectilinear. Now the center is going to be a very uh, less dense uh, material of 5% gyroid. This is what gives the wheel its sponginess, its comfort, um, its flexibility. The gyro pattern is strong in all directions and it, it really compresses and decompresses really well. And it's perfect for creating a tire like this. And this is really the secret sauce to this. A wheel and then now to print another seven percent uh gyroid we need a helper there because if we don't have it see these spots it's going to try to print over air and it might fall underneath and you might have inconsistent results so i put the helper there okay and it's going to do another seven percent at this height um that's going to be number two Right, and then before it starts printing the top pop a honeycomb pattern, I put another helper there. Without it, uh, what happens is because when the honeycomb pattern is printed, it goes zigzag like that, and that's not very good printing over air. So by just having a little layer of helper, um, helper one, it's gonna allow you to print that perfectly. All right, and as far as the curves on the uh, wheel itself, um, they're at 45 degrees or uh, lower, so you can print it using a FDM printer. So with FDM printer, if you want to print a whole wheel, um, you'll want to stay under 45 degrees. So that's why you have that. Now, let's go take a look at the video again here. Now, very important. How do you know a wheel is uh, printed very good? You should first thing you should inspect is the perimeters on top. Um, make sure they don't delaminate if it printed correctly. If it did la delaminated, um, it could be num number of causes. Uh, but I found that using cheap CHC nozzles uh, on AliExpress, they cause uh, the perimeters uh, laminate. But see, this is a very good bond. Also, you may want to uh, play with the temperatures. Make sure it's nicely bonded, then you're good. And make sure you can push in a little bit here with a little bit of force in the middle. And then it should be kind of firm, but still slightly flexible on this number two and number three tread. So the middle tr tread should be slightly pressable, right? And now I weigh 170 pounds. This is perfect uh, infill percentages for myself. Um, go ahead and <clears throat> try this first. And if it feels a little too mushy, um, you can go ahead and increase the infill of two and three uh, from 7% to 8% and change the 5% in the middle to 6% and keep going up until um, you reach the hardiness you want. Uh, you can also lower it, let's say if the wheel becomes too hard. Now I did use a various different filaments. Um, the one I recommend is actually Preline. Uh, that gives you the most consistent results as uh, same as the filaments I'm using. Every TPU filament has slightly different shore hardiness. And when you print it out, for example, when I use Overture, the wheels became like rock hard. So uh, I feel like I don't recommend Overture. Um, you, the material is, is more like 97A, not 95A. Uh, Duramic, I found out it's actually too soft. The reason why we use 95A uh, is it's a good, good material to give you strength uh, and flexible at the same time. If you use uh, materials that are too soft, then you're gonna have more infill. You're gonna end up wheels that are gonna be much, much uh, heavier. 
everything, right? But you could you could try using Duramax also, but I just recommend the pre-line because it, it's worked for me. See, this is uh, made with Duramax, and it's you can see here it's a little too flexible. This is gonna be very, very mushy. This might actually work for those of you who weigh like maybe 120 pounds or less um, because you don't weigh as much. Here's one I just printed out today with pre-line, and this one gets very consistent results. I can still push in the middle, and then it's still slightly flexible in the second and third um, tread. And then in the the ends are very pretty much rock solid. All right. Again, the reason is to give you good range. I you could make this softer. Uh, for example, if you're riding in snow or something or freezing temperatures, you might actually want to make the sidewalls around 35% instead of um, 42%. In the winter, I've actually ran. Uh, all, all of my sidewalls at 35% to give more flex. And as far as the flex of your wheels, you should be able to flex a little bit. You should be able to feel a flex, but not too much, all right? But that is a solid tire right there. And also, again, uh, with materials like Duramax, you might want to increase the second and third tread percentage to maybe 8%, maybe 9%, uh, and the middle to 6 or 7%, and you should be able to make it work also. But yeah, if you want to get consistent results right now, my number one recommendation is Preline. Um, they, have, they have a bunch of different cool translucent colors. I also bought Saint Smart, which I'll go ahead and test out soon. I'll give you results. I have a new forum called ask.doctoryskateboard.com. Um, I'll post all my results there so you guys can join there. Overture, I don't recommend. Um, it's the filament's a little hard now. Let's go back to the slicer settings and go through all the settings now I, tr I tried printing in super slicer and Prusa slicer. I got better results with uh, Prusa slicer. I have exact settings But for some reason Prusa will actually use slightly more filament and also just just gives you better results um, I think it's something to do with the algorithm uh, now Prusa slicer does support all kinds of printers um, this one is set for stock Prusa MK3S. Uh, if you have a stock 3 MK3S, you're good to go. Otherwise, go ahead and change your printer settings. Uh, machine limits, I've raised X and Y to 3000. Uh, just minor Excel improvements. Important thing is retraction. I found TPU to be consistently really good at 1.7 millimeters without oozing. Make sure you dry your filament. I dry my filament at least 24 hours uh, before printing. Um, Retraction speed 35, detraction speed 17. These are numbers that work great for Prusa MK3S Plus. If you have another printer like Voron, Rat Rig, blah, 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 uh, you may have to change different values. You can try these values. Uh, you, you may want to do some retraction tests with your filament. Now, if you go into filament settings, um, I've got the max volumetric speed at five millimeters cube per second. Uh, this is the max I would recommend on a Prusa. You can go slightly higher, but uh, a lot of times you end up clogging the nozzle. Uh, if you want to go higher, you can go get a, a ball bearing setup that's less restrictive, and which what I run on my machines, and I can do up to eight millimeters cubed really good. Um, cooling, this is a default cooling. It'll just do 50% after six layers. And filament uh, extrusion multiplier. You want to use 1.06. That's a very good value because TPU filament, uh, it doesn't extrude like hard filaments. So you want to have a little bit extra. That way you get very good layer adhesion and you make sure uh, the filament comes out great. Uh, for the film I'm using at 240, I'm using 240 for all the filaments that I've been buying on the Amazon. It seems to be uh, work great for me. So that's what I recommend. I do a linear advance. Uh, what this is allows you to print faster without bad corners. And this works really well. So I've got M900K 0.08. I would actually recommend that keep that setting you can go higher but you end up uh, getting two rounded treads all right so 0.08 that's going to give you very good results uh, as far as print settings layers and perimeters uh layer high is going to be 0.3 uh i recommend 0.4 nozzle i've tried 0.6 millimeter nozzles but they they do tend to ooze ooze a lot more especially with tpu material it's uh, i just recommend 0.4 Perimeters, it's going to be 10 perimeters, all right? And then there's going to be top, top and bottom is going to be zero, zero. Right? You can close up the wheel you want. You won't get as good cooling because air won't go through the wheel. Um, avoid crossing perimeters. This allows you to keep all that ooze inside the wheel. I recommend aligned uh, for seam position. I recommend a perimeter generator, uh, Arachne. 
that totally makes a huge difference. So if you are using another slicer, again, I do recommend using the Arachne on Prusa slicer. It's just so much better than anything else out there. If you're using another slicer, um, you will definitely have to go through uh, probably weeks of um, trying to figure out how to make this work. Just because it took me months to figure out these settings. Overall info is gonna be 5% gyroid. I've covered that. That's gonna be just really for the middle treads. Uh, we're not doing support, so skip that. Speed, these are the speed settings I'm using. Um, you can try faster speeds if you want, but these work uh, great on all my Prusa stock printers. Advanced is very important here. Now, I did tell you, you can modify the per infill percentage for tread two, three, and the middle. Now, another way you can um, adjust the strength of your perimeters is with uh, perimeters and external perimeters. This is because when you print it out, when you print it out, you see, you see this is the, the yellow here is internal perimeters. Uh, the orange is external. So if you make the width bigger, uh, it makes it stronger. And you may, you may want to use less perimeters, all right? Vice versa. Right now I'm using 0.5 because I was using 0.6. It was stronger, but I was getting uh, worse prints. So I recommend staying at 0.5. And if your wheel becomes too strong, for example, um, you, let's say you're using a filament that's too hard and your, your wheels don't flex at all, it should have a little flex. If it doesn't flex at all, then you can change, uh, try lowering the perimeter and external perimeters, maybe lower by uh, 0.05. So instead of 0.5, try 0 0.45, 0 0.45. And another thing um, also with the infills, if the adjusting the percentage doesn't work for you, um, for example, it's, it's just too hard. Instead of change the infill numbers, um, you, you might want to set this 0.6 to like 0.5 or even try 0.45. All right, and that will dramatically reduce uh, the strength of the infill and uh, make it softer. All right, so there's two ways to do it. You can change the infill numbers um, with the modifiers, all right, or you can change the, the extrusion width, which really controls the strength of your infill and your perimeters. Other than that, I think I covered everything for this particular dude. Uh, the TPU wheels are actually the hardest part to master, uh, to really tune. But the way I have it tuned right now, if you print it, um, you're gonna get perfect wheels if you use uh, pre-line pre uh, filaments. Now the filament I am using is actually, it's actually directly from the factory. I bought literally a ton of filament a year and a half ago from uh, Alibaba. So this is a filament they don't really sell in retail. But I found that pre-line has the closest in terms of uh, results that I'm getting. But if you're trying different materials, um, you can surely do it. You just have to play with the infill numbers and the, uh, the width. Okay, the hubs are actually a lot easier to print uh, because you're not dealing with flex of the material. You can use any slicer, so I'm actually using a super slicer. Eventually, I'll have a 3MF file made for Prusa that you can use. Uh, but for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and share some of the settings. Um, this is for ABS, by the way. I had to change my extrusion multiplier to 0.9 on my particular ABS because it was over extruding. Um, printing at 250 degrees, 115 uh, bed. Max volumetric speed of 15. This is for my Voron. I print ABS in Voron. But again, you can print the um, hubs in PETG on Prusa. A uh, PETG is very strong also. I have had zero breakdowns while using PETG. As far as my retraction uh, I use 0 0.5, all right, in 40 and 40. Uh, retract on layer change wipe while retracting. I'm using Clipper here. So instead of linear advance, I'm setting a uh, pressure advance at 0 0.05. Layer perimeters. Oh, let's actually look at uh, the width is the part, probably the most important. I use 0 0.5 for perimeters, infill 0 0.6. Very similar to the wheels. That has worked out really good for me. Um, top infill, I use 0 0.4. Um, speeds. The most important thing with the hubs is just basically the width and the perimeters, all right? And when we slice this thing, uh, make sure you have enough perimeters to cover the wheel itself here. And it's the infill set at 40%. And you can see um, most of it is connected. Make sure all the perimeters um, sort of connected and you just have a little infill, all right? And this has never broken down on me. Um, so print settings, infill, 
I do 40% honeycomb. Make sure you use honeycomb. Uh, connection length, not so much important. I could use five. And then perimeters, uh, make sure you use enough perimeters. I'm using eight and solid layers seven, seven. Set, anything seven or higher is pretty good for perimeter solid layers. I just put some extra just to, you know, make it a little stronger. Um, so do that. And also another important thing for, for printing an ABS, there is a slight bit of warping. So what I do is I scale the X and Y 100.5 uh, and 100.5. I don't scale the Z because I end up with a slightly taller hubs and it sort of sticks out of the hub. So I just recommend changing the X and Y of the hubs uh, by 0.5. And you may have to do more if you're using a different type of ABS. So you'll have to test with that. But if your size of your hubs are right, the bearings will fit um, pretty easily, right? Without having to force it in. Uh, also, another important thing uh, is when I'm printing these hubs out, um, you'll want to make sure uh, the seam position is in random, all right? This is because if you have a seam on one side, uh, that might make it hard to put your bearings on. Uh, it's just better to have it random for the hubs. Um, if you're printing PET G, you can just leave it alone, print it 100%. These designs are actually um, made for PET G, but I'm printing them out in uh, ABS, right? ABS is lighter, uh, stronger. But Petchy works great also. So you'll need four sets of this. This is actually three sets I'm printing out. And I think that covers most of it. Um, wish you guys luck. If you guys need any help with it, go sign up for my new form at ask.doctoreskateboard. Post your questions there. I'm in South Korea. Um, so most likely if in the US or other countries, I might be sleeping when you're asking a um, question. Uh, by having the forum, I could help you better. Also, it could help other people with the same questions I've answered. So use the forum and uh, there, there's, there's also like a chat thing you can do on the forum and get a d direct contact, contact with me if, you, if needed. But yeah, these wheels work great. You're gonna love them. They're on a whole another level from urethane and cloud wheels. The range is not gonna be so good. It's gonna be more like pneumatic air tires. That's just because it's so much absorbent of the impact. Um, but if you commute a lot on your uh, electric skateboard like me, I use it every day. Um, if you're getting older, you have arthritis, your pain is gonna go away. You're gonna have this really floaty ride uh, without having to carry a big air tires with you. Also, the beauty of this system is that you can go ahead and um, move to larger wheels. I'm gonna be posting 139 millimeters soon. You can reuse the hubs. Uh, it's eco-friendly. If your tires wear out, just print the tires and replace it. The hubs, you can keep re reusing them instead of buying a whole new urethane wheel. Oh, another huge important thing I forgot to uh, point out. Um, on a Prusa stock printer, make sure you adjust the filament uh, tension screw. Um, loosen it all the way. And then on the other side, it, it should it should be just like literally like maybe one one and a half turns and two two turns in all right that way it prevents jamming uh clogging one more note um if you have a good printed wheel um you see there's very little oozing all right like that this is and then you can take a look at the results with pre-line uh seam there very good results uh with duramax i get a little bit too much oozing and the <clears throat> results went so good down over here. Um, this one actually came out pretty good, right? Uh, even if your results are not um, perfect, you're gonna still be able to ride them. Um, just as long as your perimeters are nice, it should not be a huge deal, but a good wheel should look uh, something like this. With a very good seam there. Uh, if you did not have good results, you may want to uh, tune your printer. Uh, maybe check your belts, um, change the nozzle. Um, I'm just using standard E3D V6 nozzle. I'm actually using, uh, some of them I'm using just ones off AliExpress, having good results. 